Uh, I've recently come back from America, having been to Beaver Creek, and I'd like you to ask you to comment on some of my observations. So I was in Spokane, Washington, where the mall was like a ghost town. Stores were empty, shelves were bare. In other words, it feels like the US is in recession, despite what the data says. Therefore, as the calls for a soft landing are getting louder, do you think the US has been in a recession this whole time? And if not, do you think it's headed for one anyway, despite the Fed rate cuts? Normally, I'll start with you. Yeah, that's an excellent question. And I, I think what you're seeing hits on a, a few different points that intertwine regarding where our economy is. Um, on the macro high number level, um, our economic growth, our GDP, um, is really adjusted for inflation flatlining or flat line. So whether we call it a soft landing, a recession, slow growth, the reality is that the United States economy isn't growing and it's particularly not growing when you adjust it for inflation. Um, and what you're seeing with consumers, which have been, because we are a consumer and, and, and service oriented economy, have been the drivers to a large extent of the economic growth that we do have, as limited as that currently is, are tapping out on their own resources. So consumers have um, run up effectively to pay bills, to pay health care, to pay utilities, food, et cetera, rents, um, run up their extraneous cash flow. We've seen savings rates plummet. We've seen credit card balances get to record highs. And we've seen the cost of servicing credit card debt also get to record highs because of where the Fed is in its rate cut cycle and also because of this debt burden. You put all of that together and the, the U.S. consumer is struggling to basically make ends meet and the U.S. economy as a whole isn't showing tremendous growth areas. There are some, and we can talk about those, but in general, and the U.S. itself is steeped in over $35 trillion of debt at a record debt and a record deficit level, which also doesn't necessarily propel growth. It propels the need to service its own debt. And, and that's what you're seeing in, in, in the malls and, and in the streets of the United States. Quick break here. This episode is brought to you by West Red Lake Gold Mines. Now, if you know nothing about West Red Lake Gold Mines, let me tell you one thing. This company was founded on the back of a transaction where they purchased the Madsen Mine in Northwestern Ontario in an area called the Red Lake Gold District, which to date has produced around 30 million ounces of gold from some of the richest gold deposits in the world. Now, what they paid for this mine versus what they got has led legendary mining entrepreneur Frank Justra to call this transaction the deal of the decade. And Bob Moriarty, founder of 321 Gold, was recently on my show calling West Red Lake Gold Mines one of the two most undervalued gold companies in Canada. If you're curious why these individuals are so excited about West Red Lake Gold Mines, hit the link below to learn more. Now back to the episode. Unfortunately, I'm not going to add much more positive thoughts than Nomi. I totally agree. And I think we have to be blunt and, and, and clear about this. Um, you know, I've said, not to be flippant, it was never a soft landing for more than a, over a year. I've been saying in a lot of ways, I'm not waiting for the MBR to tell me I'm in a recession. That's like kind of waiting to have a doctor tell you you're sick when you're already at the cemetery. It's always a lagging indicator on the U6 or, or U3 unemployment, mostly the U6. But I, I look at the evidence of a recession um beyond just the official numbers and i and i wasn't meant to be flipping but to me it's not not only not a soft landing it's been a hard landing it, the fuselage has hit the runway the luggage is all over the tarmac and the you know the engines are on fire and that sounds sensational but again you have to look at certain things like 13 year peak bankruptcies business bankruptcies and year over year job losses hundreds of thousands in tech and you know our bankruptcies are up 35% year over year and the, and the Fed, I think, knows. And again, Feds are politicians, just like any other branch of government. I consider the Fed, sadly, a fourth branch of government now. They know that the unemployment is kind of a joke. A U6, which is, I think, more fair than U3, is already at 7%. That's dangerous, you know, and the official labor numbers are now over 4%. Um, you know, that includes some pretty dangerous job losses behind that. And I think you can't call that even, and frankly, we, the technical definition of a recession was redefined when we had two consecutive sessions of yeah. GDP, negative GDP. And then we now we have the SOMS rule. But I thought if you looked at the M2 money supply, if you looked at the conference board being indicators, if you looked at certain indicators a year and a half, two years ago, we were already looking at a very rough landing, if not a hard landing. I think if you ask the middle class, if you looked at the, the shopping malls, not only in Colorado, but in Minnesota, Michigan, Ohio, Virginia, 
California, they're pretty empty. Certainly in Seattle and South Chicago or Third Street Promenade, it's it's appalling. So these are personal anecdotes. These are supported by quantifiable and empirical data, which Nomi obviously knows extremely well. And I completely agree with, we can't call that positive news. That's not to be negative for negative sake or in an echo chamber of doom and gloom. These are blunt realities that I think we're all facing. And of course, to Nomi's point as well, the real problem is debt and the real hence inflation is a problem from that. I mean, I think America and our politicians and even our central bankers need negative real rates. We need inflation to be higher than the yield, and we get around that by misreporting inflation. That's not fable, but fact to me. I think Wall Street knows that. More and more investors are aware of that, but that is what it is. We lie about inflation. Inflation is the end game for, for me. We can still have disinflation or deflationary moments, certainly rising rates the way we did, or having a recession is deflationary or disinflationary. Even a market mean reversion could be disinflationary. But whether we cut rates or lower rates, we're going to have to monetize our treasury market because that is the, the Fed's real mandate in my mind beyond inflation and employment is keeping those treasuries bought somehow in some means. And that to me means more synthetic liquidity liquidity in the long run, which means more inflation. And of course, inflation is an invisible tax. It's theft on the middle class in particular. It's yeah. on all of us, but it affects the middle class the most. So these things are all very recessionary and very hard landing in my mind.